Good morning. So today we are going to talk something about food toxicants and food adulteration and food adulteration act. I'll be covering this topic under the following headings that is food toxicants, food adulteration, concept of adulteration, examples of food adulteration, test for food adulteration, notable incidents on adulteration, acts of adulteration, Objectives of the Act, FSS, AI, Ag Mark, Government Measures, what are the penalties if you create a problem like adulteration, prevention and social measures, of course, one by one. Let us get into this thing. Now, first, let us define what is food toxicant. Food toxicants are the substances which are present in food products by the means of additive or adulteration that produces toxins which causes harm to our body resulting in foodborne diseases. What are foodborne diseases? A disease either infectious or toxic in nature caused by agent that enters in the body through the ingestion of food. With the increase in urbanization, industrialization, tourism, and mass catering system, foodborne diseases are on the increase throughout the world. Now, foodborne diseases, as far as we are concerned, can be classified as first is foodborne intoxications and foodborne infections. Let us first think or discuss something about foodborne intoxications. Number one, due to naturally occurring toxins in some foods, for example, latherism, the toxin available is beta oxalyl amino alanine BOEA, which is popularly known as. In Nemex ascites, we found pyrolizidine alkaloids as the toxic element. Second is due to toxins produced by a certain bacteria. Yeah, naturally occurring. Second is now toxin produced by a certain bacteria, botulism, staphylococcus poisons. Number third is toxins produced by some fungi, that is aflatoxins, ergot, and fusarium toxins. Second fourth group is due to food borne chemical poisoning. Heavy metals like mercury usually found in fish, which was the Minamata disease is the best example, cadmium found in certain shellfish and lead in canned food. Oils, petroleum derivatives and solvents, tricrysine phosphate or TCP or migrant chemical from packaging material like asbestos, etc. They also cause food intoxication. Pesticide residues, that is DDT, PHC are also the culprits. Now we go for foodborne infections. Foodborne infections means bacterial diseases, typhoid fever, paratyphoid fever, salmonellosis, staphylococcus intoxication, botulism, bacillus cirrus, food poisoning, E. coli, diarrhea, non cholera, vibrio illness. Vibrio, para hemolyticus infections, streptococcal infections, shigellosis and brucellosis, just to talk about some bacterial infections. If we talk of viral diseases which are called foodborne infections, they are viral hepatitis, gastroenteritis, viral in nature. We go for parasitic in nature, tiniasis, hydatidosis, ascariasis, and amoebiasis. Let us now first talk about latherism. Latherism is also known as Lethyrus sativus. Sorry, it is because of Lethyrus sativus called Kasri Dal. They are Teoda, Teoda Dal also. It is added mostly in Arar Dal for adulteration purpose. Diet containing more than 30% Dal taken over 2 to 6 months causes neurolatherism. The toxic agent is beta oxalyl amino alanine, BOAA. 
how this neurolaterism takes place. It is a disease of nervous system characterized by gradually developing spastic paralysis of lower limb. It is a form of irreversible, non-progressive spastic paralysis. Very important word. It is a form of irreversible, non-progressive spastic paralysis, periparasis, with poorly understood degenerative changes in spinal cord. Once prevalent in Europe, North Africa, Middle East and parts of the Far East, now the disease is presently restricted to India, Bangladesh and Ethiopia only. This is dal. Pure dal is seen and Kesri dal is also seen here. See, basically they look almost similar. And that is why adult patient is used for this purpose. Stages of latherism. The disease mainly manifests in the age group of 15 to 45 years in five successive stages in untreated cases. The five stages are as follows. The initial or latent stage, the patient displays only unsteadiness of gait and is otherwise normal. Then comes no stick stage. The person walks without the help of a stick with short jerky paces. Then comes one stick stitch. Patient walks with a cross gait and tendency to walk on toes. Patient walks with the help of a stick. Then of course two stick stitch. The symptoms are more severe. Gait is slow and clumsy. Patient gets tired easily with walking a short distance. Crawler stage. Erect posture becomes impossible as atrophy of the leg muscle occurs. So this is how progress takes place. What are the prevention and control of lathyrism? Vitamin C prophylaxis is preferred in the form of 500 to 1000 milligram of ascorbic acid daily. Banning the crop. PFA Act banned the sale of casseridol in all forms. Removal of toxin. How do we remove it? The removal of toxin is tipping method. Soaking in hot water for more than two hours. After which the soaked water is drained off completely. Then pulse is washed again with clean water. Followed by drained off and sun dried. This is called tipping. Second is parboiling. Lentils are cleaned and soaked in hot water for 3 hours at 70 degrees centigrade. Then drain the water and steam for 20 minutes followed by some drying 2 to 4 hours. Next is simple soaking. Soaking in lime water overnight followed by boiling destroys the toxins. And then of course other than 3 methods one has to educate the people. Genetic approach can also be taken cultivating strains of lathyrus containing very low level of toxins. Socioeconomic changes are also preferred and advised. This you can see one stick on two sticks. A seeds of crotalaria, toxins, pyrolizidine, alkaloid, that is hepatotoxin in nature. Preventive measures, what do we do? Education of public, de-weeding of junjunia, Simple sieving of millet at household level of Junjunia seed is the preventive steps we can take for this particular disease. Then we talk in terms of botulism. It's a rare poisoning caused by toxins produced by Clostridium botulism bacteria. Botulism can be fatal and requires emergency medical care. It can affect infect by means of honey home canned vegetables and fruits, corn syrup. Children and adults can be affected by home canned food with low acid content, improperly canned commercial food, home canned or fermented fish, herb infused oils, baked potatoes in aluminium foil, cheese sauce, bottled garlic, food held warm for extended period of time. So these are the uh, items which can uh, produce botulism poisoning. Its incubation period for infant is 3 to 30 days and for children and adults it is 12 to 17 hours. Symptoms 
as far as infants are concerned lethargy weakness poor feeding constipation poor head control poor gag and sucking, sucking reflex in children and adults it is something different double vision blood vision drooping eyelids slurred speech difficulty swallowing dry mouth and muscle weakness duration of illness is variable in both the groups variable what is the treatment clear out the digestive system by inducing vomiting and giving medication to induce bowel movement antitoxin called as bent botulism antitoxin heptavalent can be injected to reduce risk of complication it attaches itself to the toxin that is still circulating in the blood stream and keeps it from harming the nerves next to discuss is staphylococcal poisoning staphylococcal poisoning is a gastrointestinal illness caused by eating food contaminated with toxins produced by the bacterium staphylococcus aureus staph is found on the skin and in the nose of about 25% of healthy people and animal it usually does not cause illness in healthy people but it has ability to make toxins that can cause food poisoning it can also be found in an unpasteurized milk and cheese products it is a salt tolerant it can grow in salty food and multiplies in food and produces toxin foods at highest risk of transmitting its toxins are those that people handle and not cooked food examples are sliced meat pudding pastries sandwiches the food contaminated by the toxin do not smell bad or look spoiled very very important thing to understand the staphylococcal poisoning wala food jo hota hai the food contaminated by these toxins do not smell bad or look spoiled the fast acting toxins and symptoms usually develop within 30 minutes patient typically experiences vomiting nausea stomach cramps and then diarrhea now this cannot be passed to other people and typically last for only one day prevention the most important treatment is plenty of fluids medicine may be given to decrease vomiting and nausea Patient with severe illness may require intravenous fluid in the hospital. Although staph bacteria are usually killed by cooking, but toxins are resistant to heat, and so cannot be destroyed by the cooking. Wash hands and under finger nails thoroughly with soap and water before handling and preparing the food. Most important thing: do not prepare food if you are ill. If you have wound or infections on your hand or wrist. We are gloves while preparing the food, or don't go to the kitchen. Keep kitchen and food serving areas clean. Next is aflatoxins, the fungus. Mycotoxins are produced by Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus. This is hepatotoxic and potent carcinogen. Moisture level above 60 degree, 16 degree, and temperature between 11 to 17 degree centigrade favors aflatoxins formation. How to control it? Storage of food grains after drying, less than 10% of moisture should remain there. That's all. If contaminated, food should not be consumed. Health education regarding toxic effects of infected food grains. These fungi infest food grains such as groundnut, maize, parboiled rice, sorghum, wheat, rice, cotton seed, tapioca under condition of improper storage. And produce aflatoxins, of which B1 and G1 are the most potent hepatotoxins, in addition to being carcinogen. Aflatoxicosis is quite a big public health problem in India. The largest report in 1975, 400 cases of aflatoxin poisoning, including 100 deaths, from Baswada and Panchmal district of Rajasthan and Gujarat, respectively. highlights the problem in india aflatoxins b1 has also been detected in samples of breast milk and urine collected from children suffering from infantile cirrhosis attempts are also being made to relate aflatoxins with human liver cirrhosis as far as argut 
poisoning is concerned. It is caused by field fungus, Clavis fusiformis. The grains which are infested are bajra, rye, sorghum, and wheat. Its sporadic outbreak is known as ergotism. Acute cases form nausea, vomiting, giddiness, drowsiness, and lasts up to 24 to 48 hours. Chronic cases, painful cramps in limbs and peripheral gangrene due to vasoconstriction of capillaries is seen. How to prevent it? Argot infested grains removal by floating in 20% of salt water and pig or air flotation. That's the solution for removing these argot infested items. This is visible as a photograph, bajra, weight, maize, etc. Epidemic drops. How it occurs? A contamination of mustard oil with arjimon oil may be accidental or deliberated. Seeds of arjimon mexicana resembles basically the mustard seeds. Weeds grow along with mustard and are harvested along. Toxic alkaloid from arjimon is sanguinary, which interferes with oxidation of pyruvic acid and it allows, which, it, which accumulates into the blood. This is how it looks like. Arjimon mexicana, this yellow colored flower, basically the sort of Arjimon mexicana. Symptoms, sudden non-inflammatory bilateral swelling of legs, often associated with diarrhea, dyspnea, heart failure and death may occur. Affects all ages except breastfed infants. 5 to 50% mortality has always Presence of argument oil can be detected by nitric acid test and paper chromatography test. How to prevent it? Accidental contamination prevention by removing the weeds growing along with mustard crop. And of course, strict enforcement of prevention of photo filtration act. Salmonellosis. It's a foodborne disease caused by bacterial salmonella. It can either cause by salmonella enteritis or salmonella type. It is a leading cause of bacterial diarrhea worldwide. Its incubation period is 6 to 72 hours, but illness occurs within 30, 12 to 36 hours after exposure. Symptoms are acute diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, vomiting, severe diarrhea. Diagnosis is based on isolation of salmonella organism. About 90% of isolates are obtained from routine stool culture, that urine, and materials from site of infection. Treatment on complicated salmonella infection is usually treated with supported therapy and antimicrobial therapy should be considered for patients who are severely ill. How to prevent it? Avoid raw and uncooked poultry, meat, egg, unpasteurized milk, etc. Wash utensils before preparing food and hand before eating food. Proper sanitation practices, education of public and socio-economic changes are required. Food adulteration. What is food adulteration? How does it take place? Let's get into it. Adulteration of food is commonly defined as the addition or subtraction of any substance to or from the food so that the natural composition and quality of the food substance is affected. Either you add something or take out the substance from the food that is the item so that its natural composition and quality is affected. That is adulteration. Food adulteration includes mixing, substitution, concealing the quality, putting up decomposed food for sale, misbranding or giving a false labels and addition of toxicants. Food is said to be adulterated if a substance is added which depreciates or injuriously affects it. Cheaper or inferior substances are substitute completely or in part. Any valuable or necessary constituent has been completely or in part abstracted. 
it is a colored or otherwise treated to improve its appearance or if it contains any added substance injurious to health. For whatever reason, its quality is below the standards. So these five items, five things are basically when present called as a dental adulteration. Intentional adulteration is done for financial gains. Addition of sand, marble, chips, stone, mud, other field, talc, chalk material, water, minerals, oil and harmful colors. These are added intentionally. Incidental adulteration happens due to carelessness and lack in proper hygiene condition of processing, storage, transportation and marketing. Example, pesticides, residue, dropping of rodents, larvae in food. Then we go for metallic adulteration occurs due to metal such as arsenic from pesticides, lead from water, effluent from chemical industries and of course tin from can. Then packaging hazards are also there. Polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride and other allied compounds are used to produce the packing material. They can also do it. The food adulteration has become a very common practice in our country and we are consuming these food almost every day which has numerous harmful effects to our health. It frequently occurs where informal food production and marketing services are predominant and enforcement of food regulation is very weak. Food adulteration is unethical and so is called as social evil and a slow poison. What are the disadvantages to the consumer? He or she is paying more for the stuff of lower quality. Some form of adulteration is injurious to health even resulting in death. We want to see adulterants in the food and their health effects it is written here. I'll just read to food, edible oil and fats, adulterant, white oil, petroleum, fractions, etc. Health problem, cancer. Turmeric, whole and powder, mixed species, lead chromate add kar dete hai jis mein. Anemia, abortion, paralysis, brain damage kar sakta hai. Food such as apple, mangoes, what do we do? They are sprayed over with lead arsenic. Ultimately, what do they cause? Dizziness, chills, cramps, paralysis, etc. So these are all very much uh, in vogue. These um, are adult trends. Like in case of mustard seed, edible oil and fats may argimon seeds and argimon oil mila diya jata hai. Epidemic drops se tiyar ho jata hai. So this is how adult trends work. Pulses arar ki dal mein khesti dal mila diya. Lethrism ho jayega. You know, the black pepper mein papaya seed mila do. Stomach irritation, liver damage, cancer, all these things takes place. Now how do we go for detection of these adult trends in case we want to go for it? Detection of detergent in milk, kaise karoge? Take 5 to 10 ml of sample with an equal amount of water. Check the contents thoroughly. If milk is adulterated with detergent, it forms dense leather. Pure milk will form very thin foam layer due to agitation. Right? So be careful on that issue. Adulteration test, if milk is contaminated by starch, then add a drop of tincture iodine to a warm milk. If there is no adulteration, there will be no change in color. But if there is adulteration of starch, the color will change to blue. So adulterant starch can be found out with this test. Detection of mashed potato, sweet potatoes and other starches in ghee oblique butter. How will you find out? Take half a teaspoonful of ghee or butter in a transparent glass bowl. Add two to three drops of tincture iodine. Formation of blue color indicates presence of mashed potato, sweet potato and other starches in the form of adulteration. Detection of other oils in coconut oil. Take coconut oil in a transparent glass. Place this glass in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Do not keep it in the freezer, note it down. 
After refrigeration, coconut oil solidifies. If coconut oil is adulterated, then other oils remain in a separate layer. So this is how you can find out the adulteration in coconut oil. Detection of sugar solution in honey. How will you do that? Testing method number one may take a transparent glass of water. Add a drop of honey to the glass. Pure honey will not disperse in water. If the drop of honey disperses in water, it indicates the presence of added sugar. In testing method two, take a cotton wick dipped in pure honey and light with a match stick. The pure honey will burn. If adulterated, the presence of water will not allow the honey to burn or if it does, it will produce a cracking sound. So that's how you can test pure honey. Detection of foreign resin in asafoetida. Thing burn small quantity of asafoetida in a stainless steel spoon. Pure asafoetida will burn like camphor. Adulterated asafoetida will not produce bright flame like camphor. So this is how adulterated hing can be found out. Detection of papaya seeds in black paper. Testing method one: add some amount of black paper to the glass of water. Pure black paper settles down at the base. If adulterated black paper, then papaya seed will float onto the surface. What a simple test. Right? Detection of argimon seeds in mustard. Take small quantity of mustard seeds in a glass plate. Examine visually for argimon seeds. Take a small quantity of mustard seeds in glass water. Examine visually for the argimon seeds. Mustard seeds have a smooth surface and when passed or pressed, inside it is a yellow in color. Argimon seeds have grainy, rough surface and are black in color. When pressed inside, it is white in color, right? So mustard seeds are yellow in color if you press, while argimon seeds are white in color if you press. The thing is that you can always make a difference. Detection of sawdust in chili powder. Add the sample to water. The sawdust will float on the surface of the water, while chili powder will settle down in the bottom area. Detection of cassia bark in cinnamon. Cassia bark in cinnamon. Okay. So paper is go. Take some quantity of cinnamon in a glass plate. The adulterated on close visual examination cassia bark that comprises of several layers in between the rough outer and innermost smooth layer can be differentiated from the cinnamon. Cinnamon bracts are very thin. Cinnamon barks are very thin that can be rolled around a pencil or a pen. It has a distinct smell. While Cassia box you can't. Detection of malachite green in green vegetables like bitter gourd, green chilies, and others. This color use hota hai, malachite green. Ko hara karne ke liye. Take a cotton piece soaked in water or vegetable oil. Conduct the test separately. Rub the outer green surface of the small part of the green oblique vegetable oblique chili. If the cotton turns green, it is adulterated with malachite green. That proves. Detection of clay in coffee powder. Add half teaspoonful of coffee powder in a transparent glass of water. Stir for a minute and keep it aside for five minutes. Observe the glass at the bottom. Pure coffee powder will not leave any clay particles at the bottom. Right? If pure coffee powder is there, there will be nothing you will see at the bottom. If coffee powder is adulterated, clay particles will settle down at the bottom. Simplest way to find out. Detection of white powder in iodized salt. Iodized salt, white powder add. Still three 
फोर स्पून फोर सैंपल ऑफ सॉल्ट इन ए ग्लास ऑफ वाटर प्योर सॉल्ट डिजोल्व कम्प्लीटली एंड गिव्स ए क्लियर सोल्यूशन और गिव्स लाइटली टर्बिट सोल्यूशन ड्यू टू देंस ऑफ परमिटेड एजेंट इन दॉल्ट इफ सॉल्ट इज अल्ट्रेटेड सोल्यूशन टर्न डेंस वाइट टर्बिट इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ चक पाउडर and other insoluble impurities will settle down at the bottom so this is how you can find out whether salt is clear iodized mixed or not detection of chalk powder chalk powder in sugar take a transparent glass of water dissolve 10 g of sample in water if sugar or jaggery is mixed with chalk the adulterant will settle down at the bottom okay when it is settled down at the bottom it means it is adulterated detection of artificial color in turmeric powder testing methods add a teaspoon full of turmeric powder in glass of water natural turmeric powder leaves light yellow color while settling down adulterated turmeric powder will leave a strong yellow color in water while settling down so very simple way to find out now to keep check on these particular things that is adulteration certain food standards have been prepared cards now these are codex alimentarius pfa standards agmark standards bureau of indian standards bis right so agmark gives the consumer an assurance of quality in accordance with standard laid down bureau of indian standard means the isi mark on article of food which is given is due these are the standard logos we can see government of india ka egg mark fsai isi right bis pfa and codex alimentarium that we can see no x for adulteration there are number of x why they have been prepared with an objective to protect public from poisonous and harmful food to prevent the sale of substandard food to protect the interest of the consumer by eliminating fraudulent substances so these are number of x which have been produced government measures are to check the suppliers of the food from doing so the government has passed a stringent act which is known as preservation of food adulteration act pfa act they have been implanted with objective of providing safety and human being to the human being as a supplier for is concerned it covers safety from risk involved due to contamination of poisonous element the specifications have been let down in pf act guilty from penalties point of view a guilty will be punished with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 6 months to or 3 years and fine up to 1000 rupees complaints regarding adulteration can be given at district level national level and of course state level what is element areas Codex Alimentarium Food Code was established by FAO and WHO in 1963 to develop harmonized international food health standards. Public concern about food safety issue are open. Biotechnology, pesticides, food additives are some of the issues discussed in this. Codex standards are based on the best available science assisted by independent international risk assessment. Codex members covers 99% of the world population. Basic series Egg mark is used for agricultural products grading and marking act which you can see on the, all the uh, items which are agricultural in origin objective of egg mark scheme to assure the consumer a product of pre tested quality and purity to enable the producer of good quality producers to have better returns to have a sale of the product in the market with uniform composition and well defined quality to eliminate the mark practice of adulteration now bis is the national standard body of india established under bis that is bureau of indian standards act of 2016 for the harmonious development of the activities of standardization making and quality certification of goods and food producers bis has been providing traceability and tangibility benefits to the national economy in number of ways providing safe reliable quality goods minimizing health hazard to the consumer promoting exports and imports control over proliferation of varieties to standardization the old name of this organization was isi if we remember 
right the name has been changed to bis now structure of bis there are number of members in this particular thing objective and function of bis to formulate indian standard for various articles processes method of test codes of practices etc and promote their implementation right so that was the basic fssai that is food safety and standard authority of india it's a food safety and standard authority of india food safety and standard bill piloted by ministry of food processing industries passed by parliament in 2006 right so isme kya hota hai any substance whether processed partially processed or unprocessed which is intended for human consumption how to take care of it and how make it safe for consumption what why fssi act is required multiplicity of food laws the standard setting and enforcement agencies of different sectors alag alag thi so varied quality of safety standards were followed to so, ek fssai bana diya basically to consolidate the laws relating to foods to establish food safety and standard authority of india to regulate the manufacture storage distribution sale and import etc and to ensure availability of safe and whole food for human consumption regulations of fssai food safety fssai to hai ye sab isme alag alag panch regulations bane hue the act comprises of the following acts and regulations fssai mein pf act bhi hai food products order bhi hai any order under essential commodities vegetable oil products solvent extracted out meat food products order edible oil and packaging and of course milk and milk products ye sare kanun mila kar ke inme match kar ke functions of authority basically is to regulate monitor and manufacture processing distribution sale and import of food to ensure its safety and wholesomeness
There are certain penalties for defaulters. No penalty, the stuff standard food, up to 2 lakh rupees. Misbranded item, up to 3 lakh rupees. Misleading advertisement, up to 10 lakh rupees. Food with extraneous matter, up to 1 lakh rupees. Fail to meet the requirement as directed by food safety, 2 lakh rupees. So there is a fine penalty imposed for defaulters. Some examples of cases of food adulteration in India, like ban on Maggi was done in 2015 when it was told that oh, Maggi may something is mixed uh, samples were detected with objectional level of metallic lead. Right, they were found unsafe and hazardous for human consumption. Central Government of India in 2016 banned this particular item under the Act. Cadbury's dairy milk was banned for some time because insects were found in that. Coca-Cola was banned in India. The comprises very companies were, were also attacked for running bottling plants in Kerala and this, this, this because of pesticide problem. Hinder Joy was banned from being imported according to US drug administration. Hinder Joy could be choking hazards due to small toy part embedded in them. So all these things were uh, they have undergone uh, the ban also and penalties also. Midday meal adulteration was a big problem in 2001. At least 39 students fall ill and food was found contaminated. So these were all banned under these acts. Right? So prevention of social and social measures basically have been taken under these acts which we have been preparing and utilizing them for the safety of the human being. Right now, this is safety at human level, community level, and national level. This is how things have moved. There are references which have been used for this particular purpose. Right. So here we complete this particular topic. Thank you very much.